live a group of creatures quite beyond belief. Airy, airy winkles, snails and scallops too, living every day in a special way. <laughs> Over here, Lulu, throw it to me. Throw it to me. No, Lulu, throw it to me. I'm in the clear. No, Lulu's now Grovel Intercepted if you pass it to Conrad. I wouldn't worry about that. This game doesn't seem to be too fair. You three against Constance and me. Snowgrove is right. We need another play. Just throw the ball, Lulu. Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> Did I hear you all say you could use another player for the Steve on game? We sure could, Carrie. Yeah, you can be on Snail Grove and Constance's side. That'll make it even. Why, thank you, Terry. I'd be plum delighted to play. Still wearing that Western stuff and talking funny, eh, Carrie? Whatever do you mean, Conrad? Well, when you first came here, your Western clothes and country talk made you sort of a novelty. But now it's wearing a little thin. I figured that since you've been here half the summer, you'd cut out that silly western bit and be like us. Normal. Why, back home on the Great Western Reef, it is normal to talk like this. And what's so silly about what I'm wearing? Well, that rope looks silly. What's it for, anyway? Why, that's my last suit. We use these for roping wild seahorses. Gee, are there many of those around here? I suppose not, but I'm used to carrying my little old last suit, and this is my natural way of talking. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not, Carrie. We like you the way you are. Now let's play ball. What are you going to do if the ball rolls past you, Carrie? Blast suit? <laughs> Cut it out, Conrad. You're being rude. Holy jeez, Snellgrove. Will y'all forgive me? I just can't imagine what come over, little old me. Mama told me I wouldn't fit in with these city folks. I should have listened to her. I'm heading back to the Great Western Reef, and I'm never coming back to Snailsville. I don't want to spend another minute of my vacation here. He didn't mean it. See what you've done, Conrad? Yeah, poor Carrie. Can't you show respect for anyone, Conrad? Carrie may have different customs and manners, but you don't have any manners at all. Relax, she won't go. Carrie will stay this summer, you'll see. After the treatment she got here, I don't know why she'd want to. Well, what are you standing around for? Let's try to catch up to Carrie before it's too late. I think we might find her sooner if we split up. Right, Lulu. Okay, Terry and I will look to the north, and the rest of you can search the southern part of Snailsville. There's no telling which way Carrie went. I guess I shouldn't have said those things to Carrie, even if I did mean them. I'm sorry. Well, you can just tell that to Carrie when we find her. If we find her. She may have left Snailsville by now. Cold and lonely. Come on, there's no time to lose when someone's feelings are at stake. Why, hello, Carrie. Are you going somewhere? Oh, howdy, Mr. Herman. I'm leaving town. Well, where are you going? You're already on your summer vacation. I'm going home to the Great Western Reef where I belong. Is something wrong, Carrie? Did someone say something to hurt you? Conrad did, but he was right. I don't want to change, and if my friends can't accept me the way I am, I guess I have no choice but to leave Snailsville. I don't think you have to leave, Carrie. You know, every one of us is different in some way. Yet we can learn to live together in harmony. This is something I discovered long ago. It takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Each creature has a different style. God made us all unique. Just think how dull the sea would be if all the creatures looked like me. It takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Some creatures have a spiral shell with colors bright and bold, yet others have no shell at all, some young and then some old. Yes, everyone is not like me, but that's okay. I'm sure you'll see it takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. If someone comes to visit from oceans far away, we should be learning from her each and every day. And maybe, if we're lucky, she'll decide to stay to help complete our reef 
in her own special way. Yes, it takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Different looks and customs add richness to the deep. Though this some might not realize, one day they'll find to their surprise it takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Yes, it takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Thanks, Mr. Herman. I feel better already. I just hope that day comes soon. Well, Snowgrove, did you and Terry see any sign of Carrie? No, I guess she's left town. I feel just awful. Carrie, you're still here. We were afraid you'd left Snailsville. Nope. I've decided to stay, Terry. I don't want to lose my friend. Rub us with your lasso, Terry. Then you'll be sure not to lose us. <laughs> or better yet, I could eat you all. Then I'd be sure not to lose you. No, it's in the squid. While you were talking, I was taking it all in. Now I'm going to take you all in. Into my stomach, that is. Please, m m m Mr. Squid, please let us go. Yeah, Mr. Squid, we never did anything to hurt you. I don't care if you've hurt me or not. The important thing now is you can help me cure my hunger pains. Hey, hey, what's this? It's Carrie's lasso. Carrie, you saved us. Hey, hey. Yeehaw, ride him, Carrie. Hey. Yippee. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, will you look here? Sid, what are you doing? I'm tying up a few loose ends, Stanley. What does it look like? Looks like someone has roped himself a prize squid, it does. <laughs> Very funny, Stanley. Very funny. Now be quiet and help untie me. Someday, somehow, I'll get even with them. So I guess you might say Carrie showed Sid the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should all be thankful that Carrie was there with her lasso to help you out. Oh, we are, Mr. Herman. And I've already apologized to Carrie for the things I said to her today. I realize now that everyone has something different to offer. That's right, Conrad. So maybe you'd all like to join me in this song. It takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Different looks and customs add richness to the need. Each creature has a different style, God made us all unique. It takes all kinds of creatures to make a reef complete. Yes, it takes all kinds of creatures to make Snailsville complete. <laughs> <laughs> Swimfluenza. There has been a good deal of it going around lately. Swimfluenza? Well, if I have to have something, I suppose it might as well be Swimfluenza. Why do you say that? Because it's so much more socially acceptable than the common cold. <laughs> yes, I see. Well, you still have a slight fever. So you should stay in bed, drink plenty of fluids, and I will drop by in a day or so to check your progress. Oh, thank you, Dr. Limpet. My, but that is a beautiful bouquet. Yes, it was brought by a secret admirer. You have a secret admirer? Well, uh, actually, Dr. Limpet, our secret admirer is one of the pupils of the Deep Sea Shell and Scallopin' Snail School. Ah, yes. Snail Grove Snail. Always so thoughtful and caring. No, it was Conrad Crepidula. Conrad? That certainly doesn't sound like Conrad. No, it doesn't. And that's where the secret comes in. He didn't want any of the other pupils to know about it. Perhaps, after all, that boisterous, smart aleck behavior is just to cover up a gentle and sensitive nature. Yes, it just goes to show you can't judge a slipper shell by his cover. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. With that slipper yell, most of the time, only the heel shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. But you must admit, that slipper shell has a sensitive soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs. Van Oyster bit. <laughs> Very interesting. Very interesting. 
This latest vaccine looks just like a piece of string. Oh, <laughs> it is a piece of string. I forgot to take the vaccine out of the package. <laughs> Why, Lulu, what's the matter? It's that horrible Conrad Crepidula. What has Conrad done now? Everything. He stuck my ponytail into his inkwell at school. He stuck the pages of my fishery notebook together with bubbly gum. And as if that weren't enough, he put sand in the sea salt shaker in the lunchroom. Well, Conrad may be a trifle high-spirited, but he means well at heart. It isn't Conrad's heart that bothers me. It's the rest of them. What if I were to tell you that Conrad has just performed a very kind and thoughtful act to help brighten the life of someone who is sick? I would say that Conrad must be sick. Well, that's where you are wrong, Lulu. Not only did Conrad go out and pick a beautiful bouquet of wild sea flowers and deliver them to the patient's bedside where she was lying, racked with fever, but he made her promise to keep this generous act a secret. Conrad? I don't believe it. Who is this sick person anyway? Oh, I couldn't tell you that without betraying a confidence. I'll bet she was lying. Mrs. Van Oysterbed never lied. Oh, dear, now I've gone and let the cat fish out of the pool. Don't worry, Daddy. Conrad's secret is safe with me. You're sure you won't tell anyone? I wouldn't dare. Everyone would think I was making it up. Who's taking you to the dance Saturday night, Lulu? Well, Conrad asked me, but so did Terry, and I've decided to go with Terry. Conrad is too wild for me. He's not always like that. There are times when Conrad can be very sweet and gentle. Beep, beep, toot, toot, out of my way, I'm coming through. <laughs> I guess this is not one of those times. I just heard an unbelievable story about Conrad. It's supposed to be a secret, but I know I can trust you not to tell anyone. Of course. Well, Mrs. Van Oysterbed was in bed with a fever, and... You're it, Snowgirl. I am not. You're it. Yes, Conrad, you're it. I am not. It's Snowgirl. It is not. You're it, Conrad. Yeah, you're it, Conrad. I am not. You are, too. All right, if you're going to cheat, then I'm not playing. You can go tag each other for all I care. Boy, that Conrad has to be the most disagreeable, selfish, aggravating crapadula this side of the Straits of Belle Isle. He just doesn't care about anybody but himself. That's not true. In fact, I just heard a secret about Conrad taking some sea flowers round to Mrs. Van Oysterbed's cave when she was sick. What's wrong with Mrs. Van Oysterbed? I think it's bay fever. Bay fever? No wonder Conrad wanted to keep it a secret. Gee, Terry, I haven't been to the mackerel snack bar all week. Neither have I, Snellgrove. I'm hungry. Oh, hi, Conrad. Hi, Conrad. Hi, guys. What are you doing out here? It's such a nice warm day, I thought I'd come out and take in the warm water. We're just on our way to Mackerel Snack Bar for a big snack. You want to join us? No, I can't right now. Why not? You just said you weren't doing anything. No, but I, uh, I just remembered an errand I have to do for my mother. Some other time, okay? Okay, some other time. What's the matter with him? I don't know, but he sure was acting strangely. He sure was. Gee... I wonder. You wonder what? Well, Constance told me a secret about Conrad, and I wonder if his funny behavior was because he's planning to do it again. Do what again? Well, Constance claims that Mrs. Van Oysterbed was sick with a very bad allergy, and Conrad brought her this great big bouquet of wild sea flowers. I can't believe it. Giving sea flowers to someone with a bad allergy? Unthinkable. Well, Constance could have the story wrong. Hey. Back there just now, did you get the impression that Conrad was trying to hide something behind his back? He did look very uncomfortable. I'll bet he was picking more flowers. He didn't want us to see them. You could be right, Terry. Come on, we have no moment to lose. They are... Ah! My goodness, you really have made a remarkable recovery. No more swelling in your bivalve. Blood heat well down below swimming temperature? Yes, we are feeling quite like our old self again. Oh, no, you don't, you bluefish beard, you. Mind your own business, snake. Dear us, whatever can the trouble be? I think we'd better go and investigate immediately. 
Don't you dare carry those sea flowers one step closer to this cave. Ah, go soak your head in a bucket of sand. We know what you're up to, you saddest you. I may be the saddest now, but you'll be even sadder if you don't move out of the way. What in the sea is going on? Hurry back inside, Mrs. Van Oyster Bed. Conrad's trying to aggravate your allergy with his wild sea flowers. Aggravate our what? Your bay fever. There must be some mistake. Mrs. Van Oyster Bed doesn't have bay fever. She's just recovering from swimfluenza. Swimfluenza? Well, we thought... Yeah, well, you can think again, turtle. You mean Conrad was just bringing you sea flowers, uh, just to bring you, uh, sea flowers? Certainly. As he did on a previous occasion, a very sweet and thoughtful gift. Oh, you promised you wouldn't tell. It was very modest of you to want to keep it a secret, Conrad. But I think it's time the whole of Snailsville knew. No, no, not that, not that. But Conrad, just think what it will do for your reputation. That's the whole point. It may be great for my reputation, but it's going to wreck my image. <laughs> <laughs> Today in Marine History, we are going to review the events leading up to the Undersea Atlantic Revolution, when the creatures of the North Atlantic broke away from the rule of the Britfish and became citizens of an independent body of water. Why did they break away, sir? The Kingfish of the English Channel, George the Turbot, had imposed very heavy taxes and duties on the North Atlantic fish colonies, and the citizens felt that they were being hooked. Yeah, that was the first big taxes transfer. <laughs> <laughs> that will be all, Conrad, or I will transfer you right out of the classroom. Yes, sir. Probably the most famous incident of the pre-revolutionary period happened one December night in 1773 when a school of Boston Harbor fish, led by a copperhead named Paul Rowe Weir, emptied hundreds of caskets of tea into the waters around them as a protest against King Fish George's heavy import duties. Fishtory recorded this event and called it the Boston Harbor Tea Party. Didn't that hurt the fish, Professor Periwinkle, swimming around in all that tea? Not those fish. They were all wearing T-shirts. <laughs> Conrad, I warned you. I will not put up with your constant interruptions while I am trying to teach a very serious subject. That's what's wrong with it. What's what's wrong with it? It's too serious, and that makes it boring. Perhaps then, Conrad, you can suggest a less boring way to learn about these important fishtorical events. Sure, why don't we all take parts and act out the fishtory just as it happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I must confess that that sounds like an excellent idea, and I'm even prepared to give you the rest of the day off. Hooray! Provided that you spend the time reading your fishtory texts and deciding who is to play which part. Yeah. Well, very well. I will expect you to come to school tomorrow fully prepared to reenact the incidents leading up to the Undersea Atlantic War of Independence. Hooray! Class is dismissed. Hooray! I want to be Martha Washington. Oh, Pooh, what did she ever do? She married a very important creature. Maybe, but she didn't have anything to do with the revolution. Oh, no, she certainly did. She wrote a very revolutionary cookbook. If Constance wants to be Martha Washington, then let her be Martha Washington. I know who I want to be, Betsy Moss. Then you better bring along plenty of starfish and striped bass. What for? How else are you going to make that first flag? <laughs> <laughs> Snellgrove, I think you should be that famous Boston Harbor States fish, Salmon Adams. Well, that's okay with me, but if I'm Salmon Adams, who will Terry be? Why, that other great States fish, John Hancock. Yeah, I bet I know the part you saved for yourself, Conrad. You guessed it. None other than that daring devil fish, Paul Rowear. Well, okay, now that we've got that sorted out, we'd better figure out what scenes we're going to play. Professor Periwinkle will be expecting something special. Oh, it will be special, all right. I intend to give one of my award-winning performances. Don't you mean award-winning, Conrad? You can confine yourself to award if you like, but I'm going to war. <laughs> all right, class. I'm ready for your performance. You can commence any time. The date is April 18, 1775. Betsy Moss, that's me, is having afternoon tea with her good friend, Martha Washington. Have some more tea, Betsy Moss. No thanks, Martha Washington. Ever since the Boston Harbor Tea Party, I've had nothing but tea. I just have to open my mouth. Yes, the water has been tea, dears. 
I can't decide whether the starfish on the flag should go in the middle of it or around the outside. Why don't you put them up in one of the top corners? Of course. You're so resourceful. It's no wonder George married you. Hi there. Why, it's Paul Rowear. Would you like some tea, Paul? Thanks all the same, but I haven't time. Have either of you seen Sam and Adams or John Hancock? Oh, yes. They swam up to Loxington for the day. Oh, no, not Loxington. Why? What's wrong? The Breakfast General in Boston Harbor is sending a whole detachment of red snappers to Loxington. And if they find Sam and Adams and John Hancock, their lives won't be worth a fisherman's minnow. I'll have to swim up there and warn them. Oh, Paul, you will never make it in time. Oh, no? Just watch my bubbles. Dear me, where's Conrad going? Why, to Loxington. There isn't a moment to lose. I must say you youngsters certainly are taking this seriously. War is a very serious business. Do you have another watercrest sea and sandwich? Why, thanks, Mrs. Van Oysterbed. They are delicious, but really I have had enough. More tea? Not just yet, thank you. I still have some. Well, then let me warm it up. The redcoats are coming! The redcoats are coming! Good gracious us! Mr. Herman! Mr. Herman! Are you all right? What's he got against redcoats? Very interesting. What's that? Most creatures' hearts go pit-pat, but yours goes skim-scam. Yes, price you have to pay for having a heart of gold. Arm yourselves! The breadfish are coming! Arm yourselves! The breadfish are coming! What was that? One of my patients? Correction, Doc. One of your impatients. I fear the omens bode ill for the future of our colonies. Not only that, things look really bad. Yes, our taxes grow more oppressive daily. Yeah. Next thing you know, they'll be enacting a tax on income. <laughs> well, they may be imprudent and headstrong, but they'd have to be crazy to propose an income tax. <laughs> Swim for your lives! The breadfish are coming, and they're looking for you, too! We will not flee from the redcoats. Jog a little, maybe? No! It's time for us to make our stand in the sand, and if this means war, so be it. That's exactly what it means. I'll teach you to invade my tea party with your foolish war game. Be reasonable, Mrs. Van Oysterbed. This is no time for reason. Let's get out of here. Boy, Mrs. Van Oysterbed sure was mad. I'll say. And just because I broke up her tea party with Mr. Herman, that's silly. Oh, I wouldn't say that. In fact, I figure we might still be under the rule of the Britfish. If only... If, if only, only what? what? If only Mrs. Van Oysterbed had been on their side at the time of the Boston Harbor Tea Party. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome in Stanley.